Hey everyone, my name is Pablo Santos and I'm a recent Stanford University graduate with a degree in computer science. Um, and having recently graduated, I've spent some time reflecting on my four years at Stanford. And one of the biggest themes that came up through everything was that uh, having mentorship and having guidance was one of the biggest things that helped me. So I wanna be able to take the time to go through my experiences and maybe provide some information that might be helpful to other people in a way that it was helpful to me. And one way to do that is by, I think, by going through my uh, personal experience studying computer science at Stanford. So starting off, uh, I was a freshman back in 2016. Um, and during my first week at New Student Orientation, uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to major in yet. I just knew that I liked science. I knew that I liked math, uh, but I was also interested in like public policy and that kind of thing. So I was kind of like all over the place. Um, and during new student orientation, Stanford has these uh, little um, like lectures where professors from different departments will go and talk about the department for uh, like half an hour. And I went to some for like biology, chemistry, computer science, economics. And I thought the computer science one was pretty interesting. I had no prior experience in computer science or coding uh, before at all. So just seeing at the, po the possibilities that professors were talking about was super interesting. So I enrolled in Stanford's Intro Computer Science course, CS106A, the winter quarter of my freshman year. Um, and I enjoyed it. I wasn't like super amazed or, or mind blown. I just thought that uh, it was really cool to be able to write my own code and see how it impacted or how it uh, um, was displayed on, on my computer. And I thought that was really interesting. So I took 106A. I took uh, CS106B, those are the two main intro courses at Stanford my freshman year, and I, I did pretty well in them. So I went into the summer uh, thinking, okay, I'm gonna keep on going with this. And my sophomore year, I pretty much went through the computer science core at Stanford, which by that I mean, in getting an, under, an undergraduate degree in computer science, you need to go through the course, uh, computer science courses, which are the courses that every computer science major takes. And on top of that, you need to choose a track. Um, but focusing right now on the core, uh, the core is known for having some notoriously time-consuming classes, such as like CS103, which is supposed to be this uh, class that gives the ma mathematical foundation for a lot of stuff in computer science, and also some systems courses, such as CS107 and CS110. Now, the, C the systems courses in particular are known for being super time-consuming and difficult. Um, and while they were, I, I also found them to be pretty uh, rewarding, and I ended up doing pretty well in uh, CS 110. But um, one problem that I had was that my fall quarter of my sophomore year, I decided to take three of these core classes in one quarter. Um, and while I was able to pass them, I did fine. I, I ended up being very burnt out, it was staying up late uh, a ton of the time. Um, I wasn't as happy with uh, my experience at Stanford during that time. I fell into what a lot of people call the sophomore slump and it kind of burnt me out. So after I finished the core of my sophomore year, I had to start thinking, okay, what track do I want to do? Now Stanford, uh, just to read them off, has a lot of different tracks such as artificial intelligence, uh, theory, systems, human computer interaction, graphics, information, biocomputation, and other more general ones. Now, the ones that I was particularly interested in were artificial intelligence and systems. Systems, because even though I heard a lot of people say that they were very difficult and time consuming, and the core CS classes that were systems related did show that, I felt like they would be um, the most rewarding and I feel like I would learn a lot through them. But again, I was, burnt, I was kind of burnt out, so I decided to choose artificial intelligence because while those classes were also uh, pretty difficult conceptually, they didn't have as much work as the systems classes. Um, so I decided to try to take some of those. And it was cool. Uh, and I, I took a few of the courses such as um, just a general AI class, deep learning, uh, machine learning on graphs, decision making under uncertainty. And they were cool because they were project based classes where uh, you, you would spend like the first seven weeks learning uh, the different material and whatnot. And then you pretty much sprint for the last three weeks with a partner or a couple partners in trying to make a um and trying to make some sort of project that's uh, at least loosely related to artificial intelligence which is really great um and for example i was able to uh make this really fun project where 
uh, me and a couple friends made this uh, artificial intelligence that would play NBA 2K19. Um, and while it wasn't very good or, or anything, uh, it would basically just work off of the visual output of the game. And we were, we were able to get make an agent that would be able to score and whatnot. And it was really cool to be able to see all that come together and, and work out. But the thing with artificial intelligence, though, is that there seems like there's two sides to it. One side is like the data and engineering side. Another side is the more mathematical side. Um, and I'm not as interested in the mathematical side, uh, mostly because it's pretty difficult. It requires a lot of attention to details. And the thing with the data and engineering side is that you kind of go to class, you learn about all these techniques that help uh, in AI, and then you go work on your project and you kind of just throw these techniques at your project to try to see what works and what not. Um, and because these techniques are based off this uh, very complicated like mathematical foundation, it felt like a lot of these techniques to me were kind of like black boxes where I wasn't really 100% sure what was happening, but I knew that it was making my model better. And that was just sort of un unsatisfying to me. And beyond that, I knew that I wanted to get into software engineering after I graduated. And I felt like artificial intelligence uh, classes weren't helping me with that as much. Because again, it was just kind of throwing these black boxes at a problem. And um, I felt like what I needed was more practice working in bigger code bases, more practice working on software engineering problems in teams. Um, and so because AI felt unsatisfying, and I knew that I was mostly doing it because it would be easier and I wouldn't feel as burnt out as I would have doing systems, I decided to go for what I knew that I actually wanted to do. And I took uh, some systems classes. And those systems classes did end up being uh, pretty difficult. Uh, for example, operating systems or compilers or software design, but I was able to do them and I did fine in them and um, they were super rewarding. I learned a ton, especially because these classes are more lower level. The code bases are really big. You work in partners. And for example, I remember back in my sophomore year, like classes like CS110, I would think that I would look at the code bases and they would look overwhelming. It was a ton. It felt like uh, there was a lot to look through and it felt confusing. But now after uh, going through these more higher level systems classes, I can look at code bases 10 times the size uh, as the CS110 courses, as the CS110 code bases. And I would feel comfortable going through them and discussing them with a partner and whatnot. Obviously I still have a ton of learning to do, but it felt great to see that growth. And uh, that's why I like going through, uh, that's why I'm glad that I ended up going through with systems. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much how my uh, career into uh, Stanford CS went. Um, I started off not knowing anything. I just took the intro courses. And then once I figured that the intro courses were a good fit for me, I decided to go through with the core. And based off how I did in the core, I decided to maybe look into AI a bit. And once I figured that that wasn't necessarily for me, I went into systems and I ended up getting my... Uh, degree in computer science in the systems track. Um, and it's helped prepare me for my future job. Um, and I was able to meet a lot of and work with a lot of uh, uh, really smart people and collaborate and basically learn how to work in a team environment, have fun with it, build uh, stuff on my own. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad with the experience overall. And even though this experience is directly related to Stanford, I feel like it could be useful to people uh, for schools anywhere. Um, and yeah, like I said before, I really value mentorship. I really felt like the help that I found online was super helpful to me while I was in college. And I wanna be able to provide that for students now. So if you ever have any questions, uh, just put them down in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them to the best of my ability or point you to any, any sort of resources. Um, so yeah, if you think that this helped you in any way, please like and subscribe and I'll post more videos uh, on my experience through school, my experience through the, the tech world, and just my own opinions on, on different matters related to the space. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it.